like if you go in the western countries there may be an additional question why does Islam prohibit the giving and taking of interest but the remaining 20 questions they are the same wherever you go like how if you want to appear for an examination you refer to the guide in India you have the Navni 21 most likely questions to appear in the examination if you want to get favorably good not excellent if you want to pass as far as the examination is concerned you refer to the guide and you have such books in almost all countries of the world similarly if every Muslim is aware of these 20 most common questions he will do his fard and he will become a part-time da'i so every Muslim they should be aware of these 20 most common questions as far as today's talk is concerned I will not be able to cover all the 20 most common questions due to the time limitation but you can go on our website www.irf.net where the answers are given in detail as for those non-muslims who go out of the way on anti-islamic sites and get information against Islam there are a set of another 20 common questions so 20 common questions to those non-muslims who have gone on anti-islamic sites and have got information against Islam that we won't be discussing today even that is there on our website www.irf.net as far as today's talk is concerned I will inshallah cover more than 50% of the 20 most common questions asked by non-muslims regarding Islam the first number one misconception the top of the charts is regarding the word jihad jihad is not only misunderstood by many of the non-muslims but it is even misunderstood by many of the Muslims non-muslims as well as many of the Muslims they believe that jihad is any war fought by any Muslim whether it be for any reason whether it be for land whether it be for language whether it be for color whether it be for race jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim whether it be for land whether it be for language whether it be for color jihad comes from the Arabic word jihada which means to strive which means to struggle and in Islamic terminology jihad means to strive and struggle against one's own evil inclination jihad also means to strive and struggle where there's oppression jihad also means to strive and struggle in self-defense jihad also means to strive and struggle in the battlefield so jihad basically means to strive to struggle for example if a student is striving and struggling to pass the examination in Arabic we would say that he is doing jihad and many of the non-muslims including many of the Muslims they believe that jihad can only be done by Muslims there are several verses in the glorious Quran talking about jihad done by non-Muslims Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Luqman chapter number 31 verse number 14 وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَحْنًا عَلَى وَحْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي أَعْمَيْنِ that we have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents his mother bore him with weakness upon weakness and gave birth to him with weakness the image at next verse Surah Luqman chapter number 31 verse number 15 وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا and if the parents they strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then do not obey them but yet live with them 
with love and compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats a similar message in Surah An-Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 8. وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ لِتُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا That you have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about non-Muslim parents who are striving and struggling to make their children worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is called jihad fi sabil shaitan. And what we Muslims should do is jihad fi sabil Allah. But normally when the term jihad is used, it is taken for granted that it is jihad fi sabil Allah, unless it is specified. And many non-Muslims, including many of the Muslim scholars, inverted commas, they translate jihad as holy war. If you translate this word holy war into Arabic, it means Harbum Muqaddasa. Nowhere is this word Harbum Muqaddasa present in the glorious Quran and in the authentic hadith. So jihad basically means to strive to struggle. One type of jihad is qital that is fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But jihad does not basically mean a war. Jihad basically means to strive, to struggle. And if you look at the history of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first 13 years of prophethood during the Meccan era, there were several verses revealed talking about jihad, but the sahabas, they never fought physically fighting. It was later on when they went to Medina, there the wars took place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah al Abut, chapter number 29, verse number 69. Fina subulana, wa inna al -muhsineen. And those who strive in our ways, we shall surely open up their pathways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 52. But do not follow the unbelievers, but strive with them utmost strenuously with the glorious Quran. Do you mean to say you're going to fight with the glorious Quran? It means that you have to strive and struggle to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. So here we realize the misconception regarding the word jihad. Earlier it wasn't there. But after 9-11 it has come at the top of the charts. So depending upon how the media it portrays Islam, these misconceptions, they arise in the minds of non-Muslims. The second misconception is that Muslims are fundamentalist. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? Fundamentalist by definition means a person who strictly adheres to the ancient doctrine of any religion. For example, for a person to be a good mathematician, he should know, follow and strive to practice the fundamentals of maths. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of maths, he cannot be a good mathematician. For a person to be a good scientist, he should know, follow and strive to practice the fundamentals of science. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of science, he cannot be a good scientist. You cannot paint all fundamentalists with the same brush, that all are good or all are bad. Depending upon which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. For example, there is a fundamentalist robber. He's a bane for the society. On the other hand, there is a fundamentalist doctor. He's a boon for the society. 